Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I recently passed my application builder exam and I wanted to create a mini course for you guys because I know you like the admin mini course and I wanted to create another one. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the app builder exam is quite a unique exam. Um, I'm on the Trailhead page or website and under Salesforce Administrator you have the, where's the app? platform app builder exam right here but it's also under the developer tab here is it there we go right here you know what? I wonder if it's under the architect tab too well it is under the architect tab to becoming an application architect um, and not a technical architect but it will really really help you to becoming uh, a system architect which will you to technical architect which we can go over later in maybe a different course but um, it's a super awesome cert to get it kind of shows you the basics of where um, the, the clicks kind of ends and the code starts um, for Salesforce and it deals a lot with lightning especially because Salesforce is almost entirely over to lightning and they're really pushing for that so let's go ahead and get into the overview of the exam, which is what you're all here for. All right, so the exam is in the winter 21 release. So that is for winter 2021. And they release it, I believe every three or three times a year, they have a new version of the exam. Um, yeah, so just basics over it. It goes over data model, user interface, business logic, security, um, reports, dashboards, stuff like that. It's a little bit different from the admin exam and also a little bit different from the advanced admin exam, but there's a lot, a lot of crossover here. So if you're taking one of those exams, I would highly suggest studying for another one of those exams. Um, they recommend that you have six months to a year of experience of building applications or just being an admin on the system, kind of understanding how Salesforce works. Again, experience is super duper helpful because you can explain why a certain answer is correct um, in the exam and be a lot more confident. Like I said before, lightning is a huge deal. I don't think that I came across anything dealing with classic on the exam. So be sure to do that and be familiar with lightning and what, well, maybe I did have a few things, but anywho, um, yeah, so about the exam, so it is a 50 to or 60 to 65 multiple choice slash multi select question. So this could be select two out of three or select two out of four and three out of five or just select one um yeah and you may or may not have five unscored questions i've sat for a salesforce exam five different times and i've only had those five unscored questions once but i've known people to get way more exams and have it every single time so you will have 105 minutes this is a minute and 45 or an hour and 45 minutes of time to pass. It is 63%. Um, it seems a little low, but trust me, it is a large amount of topics that they cover on this exam. Um, it's $200 plus any taxes. Retake is 100 um, unless you go to a certification stay webinar, which I will link down below. Um, they often have different coupon codes for a certain amount off the exam. Um, I'm recording this in 2020, so um, a lot of it will be online proctored, and I don't know if they'll have any on-site proctoring. Um, again, no references, or no, yeah, references during the exam, and there are no prerequisite exams to sit for before you get this, although I do highly recommend that you get your admin cert before this. Um, there's a bunch of different courses that Salesforce puts out. Um, and different super badges and trail mixes. It'd be go good to go through those trail mixes if you're unfamiliar, but let's go ahead and jump into the exam outline. So this covers a good amount of things. Um, it's gonna be weighted heavier towards um, the actual app part of 
safety exam rather than any other type of thing. Um, and what I'm talking about is when you go into Salesforce and you're like in the sales app or in the service app or in a custom app, um, not just on like the mobile app. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. The first one that they talk about is the Salesforce fundamentals at 8%. So this is kind of just talking about the basic capabilities of Salesforce objects. Um, what are the boundaries between using clicks and code? And when would you want to search for an app on the App Exchange rather than building something in-house? So like if you have a deadline within two weeks to deliver something, then you're going to want to go with something on the App Exchange. All right, let's move on to data modeling and management. So data modeling and management has a lot to deal with the different objects, um, how they're related, uh, different external objects and how they're related. There's a lot to do with this one. Um, some really, really important things to know here are the two different types of object, or I guess there's three different types of object relationships, but um, the master detail and associated with that is also the roll up summary fields. Um, and what junction objects are, those are super important. Um, another relationship is a lookup relationship. You're gonna wanna know what the best use cases are for lookup relationships versus um, master detail relationships. And then a third one that's kind of similar is the external object relationships. Um, in a master detail with an external relationship, can the Salesforce object be a master or detail? Um, what different kinds of lookups are there on external objects and how can you import and export data with those external objects. Um, other things are what happens when you change a field type from a percent to maybe a number field. Like are you going to lose all your data? Or pick lists. When you move from a pick list to a multi-select pick list, are you going to save all your data? Um, Another thing is the schema builder. What can you do with the schema builder? It's super great when you're creating a lot, a lot of objects and a lot of fields and wanting to relate them all, um, but it's not so good for like the granular details of each different field and page layouts and where everything goes. So be sure to understand what is possible with the schema builder. Um, so describe what, how, to, so, Loading data into Salesforce. There's a bunch of different things for loading data into Salesforce. And you'll want to be able to know what each of these things do and if they load data or if they load metadata. So, like the data import wizards, you should know the capabilities and of what that can do versus the data loader and what that can do versus the command line and what that can do. So, be sure to go over all the things. Um, and there's a bunch of resources out there and I'm hoping to be one of those resources, but let me know down below what you would like to hear from this section. All right, the next one is security. This is at 10% and a lot of these questions are going to be story based. So it's going to be get, given a set of business requirements. Um, you're going to want to tell you'll need this many record types and this many profiles, permission sets, and page layouts, or what the correct um, mix is for the particular situation that they give you. Um, and a lot, also, you want to go over field, uh, field level security and what that does, as well as um, the role hierarchies and how that plays an effect on custom and standard objects. All right, now this is the big boy. This is business logic and process automation at 27%. Um, all right, just reading down the list, we've got record types, formula fields, um, implications for roll-up summary fields, validation rules, process, approval processes, workflow, flow, process builder, um, and other things. So, or what happens when you have a series of different automations and how they kind of work together and what's the recipe and what do they do. So a basic overview of this section is um, what you'll see on the exam is a certain business use case and they'll want you to choose what the best option is. So 
versus a workflow. What can are the four different things that a workflow can do and on which objects can they be on? And flow, do you need a visual flow or a screen flow um, or an auto launch flow? Um, a process builder, when's the best use case for that? And are you going to attach an approval process to that? Do you need to delete records as a part of your automation or not? Um, another really important thing is to know when do you add in code? At what point is it too much for all these process automation to be done with clicks and you, you do need some code? Um, so yeah, I'd highly recommend setting up on roll-up summary fields, validation roles, and approval processes. I mean, that's at least what I had a really hard time understanding. So social, the smallest section is social. Um, essentially, you'll just want to know, like, okay, where can I limit access to social? Who can see social? Are they, how are they connected? And when will they not be connected? So that's that's about it. Yeah. All right. User interface at fourteen percent. Um, a lot of this will be over the lightning components. So, like, if you're in a trailhead org, you go to your top, your gear. And I wish I had trail.org open right now, but you'll be able to go onto a record page and you'll be able to edit that page and you'll see a huge canvas with different options to put on that lightning page. And that's what this lightning component is. So you wanna know what all those different lightning components are and what they can do. Um, you also wanna know custom buttons, links and actions, um, as well as other user face customization options. But a lot of these will also be story-based, so you'll want to be able to come up with a solution for what they're asking for. All right, let's go on to reporting. 5% um, is what you're doing for recruiting reports, report types, and dashboards. Um, so understand what the different dashboard components are, and given a use case, what is the correct dashboard component for that use case, um, as well as creating custom report types and creating reports. You just want to know the basics of what kind of filters are these and what can you do with reporting. Um, the next one, we're almost done, is mobile. So you want to know what you can do to customize the mobile interface. So this is a lot of like the navigation menu, and how the order of things within the navigation menu as well as what kind of colors can you customize within the mobile app. And the next one is a huge deal is global and object specific actions in the action layout and where they go on the mobile app. So global actions are anything within the mobile app that will take you to a completely unrelated record. So like if you are on a contact page and you want to create a new opportunity that's not related to the contact that would be a global action however but if you're still on the contact and you wanted to create a task that was related to that contact it would be an object specific action so that's kind of like the difference there basic overview and then let's go to app development all right so this one is a little bit more tricky um, essentially, you want to know what are the different types of sandboxes. Um, there's four different types of sandboxes. What are the use cases for those? As well as change sets. Um, change sets are used for moving over metadata. You also want to understand what the SDLC is like or the software development lifecycle. At what point are you in staging versus user acceptance testing? Um, and what would you do in each of those stages? So the next one, let's go to unmanaged packages. Those um, are also helpful for moving metadata um, and are in place when change sets just don't make sense. Um, and again, you'll want to be able to take a use case and be able to apply whatever knowledge they're asking for for how you move the data and the app lifecycle. All right, so that is the quick exam outline. Next, we are moving into maintaining your certification. Um, that will be, I believe that's once a year that you maintain it. And it used to be, 
a test, but now it is a trailhead module and it's about once a year. So thank you for joining me today. Um, a few of the resources I recommend are Focus on Force. Their exams are super helpful because they tell you why you got a question wrong or why you got it right. That is awesome. Um, and don't be afraid to reach out to people on Twitter, or on YouTube, um, on the Trailblazer community if you have any questions. Oh, also, check out the certification days. So, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like the video. It really helps me out. And subscribe. I'd love to have you join our little family. Um, and let me know what specifically you'd love for me to cover over this exam. Super happy to help. I'll catch you guys in the next one.